forgot to turn my mic up here. Yeah, Curtis, uh, you can go outside, you know, just have to, um, yeah, I think wearing a mask would be good, you know, keeping your social distance would be good. But uh, you definitely don't want to be inside all day. Like, you should go for a walk at least. I just got back from a uh, neighborhood walk with my wife. And, yeah, get some sunlight. Dude, Corey, Hawaii sounds awesome right now. I wish I could be social distan distancing on Hawaii. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yes, go photosynthesize. Get some sunlight. <laughs> wow, it's like almost like you guys were actually listening and paying attention. Let's see who is here. <laughs> Katie, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was joking that uh, it actually sounds like you guys have been in a biology class before. So I'm very proud of you. Look at all these, look at this nerd talk, man. You guys are talking about being plants, and making food not being able to move. It's good, it's good. Um, well, I hope you guys are doing good out there. Um, let's, uh, let's start off with a like warm-up question for today. Uh, what, in, in this whole closure thing and shelter-in-place stuff, um, what is, what's been, and answer this in like one sentence so that you don't like have multiple lines, but what's been um, the hardest thing about not being in school and being in shelter in place, and what's been the best thing about it? Uh, let's get an answer from everybody. Just go ahead and type it into the comment section. What's been the hardest thing and the best thing about uh, all the stuff that's happening? Go ahead and type it in. I'm gonna turn the music up. some uh, comments here. Anjali, no social interaction, sleeping. Curtis says flexible schedule. Worst thing is odd schedule. Uh, hardest thing is not getting distracted. The bummer is basketball practice is canceled for Serena. Um, Matthew said uh, staying on task, but not also not having to walk to different classes. So I'm assuming staying on task is the hardest thing and then not having to walk to different classes is the best thing. Um, not getting distracted is hard. Okay. Christy's time out. Physical and online assignments hurts. <laughs> Cluster assignments, social interactions. Tristan, you're getting fat? Man. Sit-ups, yeah, sit-ups are good. Tristan, maybe you want to do a little more cardio. Um, like sit-ups are good, like anaerobic exercises. It's strengthening your core muscles, but maybe do a little cardio. See if you can get on. I don't know if like Miss Tiziani is doing like a lot of high cardio stuff, but maybe jump on YouTube and uh, find some like high cardio workouts. Like seriously, find one that's like 10 minutes. Try to keep up with it. Um, Noah, same thing with you, man. You're not getting to the gym, um, but yeah, find some. Find some. There are some creative ways to do workouts at home. Uh, Clea says no social interactions, odd schedule, not talking to people and sleeping whenever I want. <laughs> you saw Serena outside. Serena, what are you doing? Sleeping in is good. Uh, this is Mirka saying hardest thing is no social interaction. Hey Naya, welcome. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I see a lot of common threads here. I mean, a lot of people, um, let's see, let's see, let's kind of break it down. This is my, my quick summary here. <laughs> yeah, some of the older, uh, some of the older boomer teachers, they're, they're struggling. Oh man. Dang, Corey, must be nice. Get that workout room. Um, question here, how many of you guys, uh, cause a lot of people <laughs> are talking about like the social stuff. How many of you guys have been um, like FaceTiming and uh, or Zooming or doing Google Hangouts with people? like face to face. Uh, if you're, if you are just type yes, really quick. If you're, uh, just type yes. If you're seeing able to see people online doing, uh, some face to face time. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. A lot of yeses. Um, I was talking to my AP class this morning and um, one of the things that, you know, uh, one of my students, he's a senior, he was saying that, you know, he made us, he like took my advice and made a schedule, but um, he made a good point where it's like, if you don't have an incentive to follow that schedule, it's really easy to break that, right? Even if you, even if you like write it all out and you're going to like eat at this time and work out at this time and, and do work, uh, homework at this time or whatever, it can be hard to follow that schedule. And, um, my suggestion to him that, and I'll, I'll kind of give this to you guys, for those of you guys that are kind of struggling with your scheduling, um, you know, one, like when you make your schedule, make it reasonable, right? Like you don't have to wake up at 7.30 or eight every day, but you know, Corey, you shouldn't be just waking up at noon. Um, and one thing you can do to kind of like get your, uh, get, light the fire under your butt a little bit. Um, yeah, I totally get it. You're, you're, yeah, you're at home. So it's not as, you're not as de determined. Um, but one thing you could do is like kind of get a, find your crew, right, of people. I mean, it could be two people or it could be 10 people, but like make a schedule that includes other people. Um, and uh, and I think that will really help. Like even even if like, you know, it's if you wanna like jump on a game together at the same time, or you wanna like do your health homework for Miss Lighty at the same time, um, or even just like eating, like you can text your friends and be like, hey, who wants to like all have lunch together at one o'clock, right? Um, if you make these plans, and you set a certain time, that'll help you like have a little more incentive to wake up because you know people are waiting on you. Um, I've, I found that to be really helpful for me. Like I'm looking at my schedule for today and I've got like my first appointment was at 930 with AP. I've got like three live streams with you guys. And then I've got like a phone call at, uh, at 330 for my union. And yeah, there's just like, I have like a schedule and in, in, in a normal life, I'd be like super overwhelmed and kind of annoyed that I don't have flexibility. But when you like set a certain time and you, um, you know, you tie that to someone else's schedule, um, that's, that's gonna really, really help a lot. So that's like my little tip to you about um, how to stick to a schedule. And that's also gonna help you be a little bit more social. Um, let's see what you guys are saying here. Matthew likes existing. <laughs> We're talking about sleep schedules here. don't have the same schedule teachers aren't consistent with their workload yeah yeah I know I um, Rick Kenny I'm, I'm I hear you on that um, yeah that's true Curtis they do uh, they do they do that even in regular school well you know um, just do your best out there. I mean, I, you know, like at the end of the day, we can't really control what you do. Um, you guys have to kind of know what, what helps you to thrive. I think that's a really good word. I think Kalia used that earlier. Like, uh, she said that she's doing okay, but she's not really thriving. And, um, here's the thing. I, I, I think you guys, if you've already seen the email, um, the district officially, uh, announced that we're not going to be coming back after spring break, that, uh, the, the earliest we could come back is May 4th. And um, that is more than a month from now. Um, and even though we have spring break in a little bit, it's gonna feel a lot like this. Um, 
yeah, if you haven't checked your email yet uh, or check the check the um, school website, that's uh, that's kind of the reality. And honestly, I'd be a little bit surprised if we even came back May fourth. I mean, you know, it kind of all depends on how coronavirus stuff goes. But what I'm trying to uh, say is like we got to kind of buckle down for the long run here, right? We're only in week two, <laughs> and this is gonna go on at least for like five weeks, right? Which is the next month. So. Um, you know, we're still adjusting here, but it's really important that like early on you're, you guys are, are like being intentional about like setting schedules and finding like a new normal routine for you. Okay. If you're kind of like just floating in a, as a blob and some days you're sleeping in, some days you're um, waking up early or whatever, you're going to, you're not going to have that regularity and you're going to, you're not going to thrive. You're going to really um, struggle. Um, Answering some questions here, Corey, no homework during spring break. Yeah, so during spring break, the expectation is that we're all, all the instruction is going to stop. Um, and in some ways, that's going to be really, really nice. But you guys may want to start thinking now about how you plan out your spring break, right? Because you're, uh, again, it, it's going to feel really similar to now just without the work. And um, you, you still want to, like, maintain some kind of structure there. Um, let's see. Diaries. Yeah, graduation, um, it really sucks, especially for a lot of the seniors right now. They're they're really bummed. They're, you know, prom is probably not going to happen. A lot of the senior activities that they have is probably not going to happen. Um, I did talk to Ms. Dzinski over the phone the other day and just kind of like conveying how a lot of the seniors feel really disappointed and disheartened about how their year is ending. And um, what's really cool, she, she did say like, we're going to make every effort to still you know, whenever this is over, uh, if we can, like to try to have a graduation, it just, it's not going to happen when we, it, you know, normally would happen at the end of May, but, uh, you know, we'll, we will, we will definitely like try to find a way to celebrate, uh, our seniors, uh, before they leave for college, you know, and that may, that may mean like we do something late July or something, but we're going to do our best to, to keep up with that. Um, <laughs> Kenny, you're not the first one to say, can we have graduation in Minecraft? I think my seniors were actually talking about that today. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the update. If you haven't seen that yet, May 4th, that's the earliest. Um, Justin, you asked, am I going to teach after spring break? The answer is no. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be um, having a kid soon. So, um, I don't know if I, I think I guess the last time I saw you was last week, but we are down to nine days away from the due date, which is crazy. Um, my wife's starting to have, they're not real contractions, so they're called Braxton Hicks. Um, they're false contractions. So it's kind of like the uterus starting to like practice and warm up for uh, the labor process. So she's starting to get those, which means that, you know, uh, anywhere from the next, the, within the next week or two weeks, we could be having our baby. So. Um, I, I'm not going to be coming back um, after spring break. Uh, I, my, my sub is going to be taking over. Um, if I haven't already told you yet, her name is Miss Rays. Um, and she's actually going to, at some point, I'm going to make a live stream or a screencast or we'll do a Zoom and, uh, and she'll jump on and you guys get to meet her and she'll introduce herself and everything. But she, I've been talking with her like every other day. We've been doing a Google Hangout and... Uh, helping her transition to Canvas, but she's gonna do a great job with the, the unit and um, and take you guys through some really important stuff. So, um, and I've also kind of like told her about like how we've been pacing things. Um, why don't you guys give me some feedback right now? What do you guys, uh, how do you feel about how we're running bio right now in terms of like the screencasts, uh, the workload? Um, is it, has it been good? Is it too much? Is it too little? Is it a good pace? Um, is it too clumped like some of you guys are saying? How do you like bio right now? Go ahead and comment and let me know what you think. Um, I'm gonna, while you guys are answering, I'm just gonna, again, if you came in a little late, we are, I know some people just joined us. You guys are telling me how, how what you think about the, class right now any feedback this is for me but I also pass this on to the sub to make sure she uh, can make some adjustments but how are things going right now what can we do better what should we keep uh, while you're answering I got some questions do we have a name yet <laughs> a lot of yeah we uh, we've narrowed it down to two names I'm not gonna tell you yet um, we will decide when we see the baby but uh, um, I can't tell you the middle name is gonna be Taylor because that's my dad's name so it's gonna be something Taylor Wang 
Um, okay, feedback. Corey's loving it. Kalia, we're consistent. Thank you so much for that. Christy, you said you can't see the worksheets. Um, can you elaborate a little more on that, Christy? Like, are you, when you download them, are they? Is the format all messed up? Um, I think what we could do is, because um, right now they're Word docs, so maybe the format's getting messed up. I'll try to re. I'll save them as a PDF. Maybe that'll help with the formatting issues, if that's the case. Um, but if the it's one thing if the links aren't working, it's another thing like you download them and then the formatting's all messed up. So. Um, definitely, you know, some people have been emailing me when, when they're running into problems and I've been kind of making adjustments there. Uh, Curtis, oh, Katie says, love it, but the notes that we print out, the boxes on the diagrams are really small. Uh, Katie, are you printing it out like full page or are you printing them half page? Because I think if it's half page, it might be a little small. Don't be afraid to make it a full page and then you can just fold it in half and glue it in your notebook. Um, and of course, if you need more space, you can always like just use space on the paper. Curtis, uh, the videos would display more written text on the side. It's sometimes harder to only listen to audio. Okay, so you like you want more stuff to be able to like copy down. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, Tristan says it's chill. Justin says it's all right. Anjali gives me a thumbs up. Um, Derek, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the quiz. I don't know what happened, dude. I think like I don't know if you took too long or you took a long break and then it canceled, but I. I went in and unlocked it for you, so you should be able to go back through and, and try it again. Um, once, maybe this afternoon, send me another email, Derek. I will uh, see if I can play around with it, and uh, we'll, we'll try to figure that out. If not, I'm not going to have you worry about it, because um, I, I know you were like you were trying on it. So, um, Princess is doing good. Cool. Serena, best class. Yes. Workload's pretty consistent, organized. Uh, Mirka, there's a lot of printouts. Yeah, the printouts, I, it's not my favorite. I mean, you guys know my style, but that's thats um, kind of all I can offer right now. I mean, if it works better for you, Mirka, if you don't want to print out all of it, you can, you know, you can always like pause the videos and just draw yourself into the notebook if it's easier. Um, I know it's a lot of worksheets and stuff, but that's, I, I want you to have like something physical in your notebook for each lesson we do. I don't want to just, you know, you're not necessarily going to remember that. Uh, Justin Taylor, that doesn't, that sounds pretty good. Um, let's see. Yesterday the format didn't work. For... Okay, yeah, so Christy, yeah, I, I guess it's a, it's an office thing. So I will um, tell you what, I'm gonna, if there's a little bit of time between this um, screencast or the live stream in the next one. I've actually started saving them as PDFs. I'll, I'll, I'll swap out all the the uh, the files for a PDF version, so that way it doesn't um, look like it went through a blender. That's a good way to describe it. Uh, Kenny assignment sheet, same thing. Okay, I can do that. Dog ate your printer. Okay. My printer ate my dog. That's a good one. On assignment sheet. What's going on? Connor Taylor. Okay. Corey Taylor. <laughs> uh, Curtis, I don't know. I think I, I can't remember exactly what version I of Word. It's whatever's on my school computer right now. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, guys, for sure, I'm going to, I'm gonna make a note of it right now. Um, got my to-do list here and my schedule. I'm gonna convert BioDocs to PDF. So that's gonna help a lot. Uh, Kenny, I think Windows, Windows can open it if you have, I think even WordPad might work, but it, yeah, it, Office is pretty whack. I mean, another option is you could like download it and re-upload it to um, to Google Docs and see if it helps. But it it uh, it does kind of get messed up sometimes. So, all right, guys, I'll I'll fix that. Um, okay, so we checked in, getting feedback, um, updated you on the on the, the spring break stuff, talked about the sub. Um, let's see. Any questions on this current unit? Um, I, if you haven't already, you should be you should have watched 
um, our uh, our lectures. Uh, I did uh, one on intro to ecology, and then the one on energy and matter yesterday. Uh, and then tomorrow there'll be one on biogeochemical cycles on how uh, uh, matter gets recycled. But is there, are there any like specific bio questions um, about the first two lectures uh, in this unit on assignments one or assignment two? Is there anything on the worksheet you had trouble filling in? Anything you didn't understand? Or maybe everything made sense, but you just have a follow-up question. Now's a great time to ask. Um, while you guys are, and if you want to get your notebook, go ahead and do that. Grab your notebooks and, uh, you know, maybe flip through assignments one and two. And while you're doing that, I'm actually going to go to the Canvas site and see if I can swap out a lot of those files for you guys right now. Okay, uploaded the PDFs. Let's update the links. Oh, we need a new assignment sheet too. So screencast worksheet, let's change that file to intro ecology notes.pdf. Energy and food webs, let's change that to energy flow notes PDF. And then for tomorrow's uh, matter cycling yeah. And I need to convert the assignment sheet. All right, guys, I think um, I'm going to save this. If you go to our Canvas site right now and make sure you refresh the page if it's already loaded, but all three worksheets for this week are now in PDF. That should be better. Um, and let me do the assignment sheet really quickly. Um, save to PDF. Let me turn the music up while you're while I'm doing this. updated now um, turn the music back down all right let's see um, Anjali you're saying that is there an assignment five because it jumps from four to six oh you're right it does okay let's fix that thank you yeah four is gonna um, we're gonna do assignment four over two days um, so I'm going to make that five for the climograph. All right, that's fixed. Okay, let's go back here and see what, if you guys had any questions. So, uh, Linux, da, 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 da. okay, Curtis, first question. Is it true, is it true that having a biodiverse food web is important since it prevents one species from exploding in population or going extinct. Um, yeah, okay, sorry, I had to, the wording was a little funky on that. So yeah, so you're asking, is it uh, the, is the reason why it's important to have a, a diverse food web because it prevents one species from getting too big or going getting too small? Uh, yeah, that's totally right. Um, let me pull up a picture um, of a food web so we can have like a visual of this. 
because the desert biome food web. Okay, open a new tab. Okay, so let's share that so you guys can see this here. So here's a here's an example of that food web. Um, and yeah, the idea with this, Curtis, is that um, again, it's that the idea of interdependency, right? That I talked about in the in the lecture. Um, all these things are dependent on each other. And um, the reason why you want to have as much diversity as possible is because if one species only eats like one other thing, then if either of those is thrown off, right? Let's say that you, in this picture, the uh, let's do the grasshopper and the grass, right? If the, gra if the grass is only eaten by the grasshopper and nothing else, and, uh, and the grasshoppers can only eat the grass, then if one of those populations changes, it's going to affect the other, right? If grass dies out, grasshopper dies out. If the grasshopper dies out, then the grass is going to explode uh, in population. Uh, and that may end up um, causing the grass to use up more water, take up more space. And then that's going to then impact um, the way that the grass is competing with the star cactus over here and the other cactus over there. Right? So there are uh, kind of the, the idea with this is it's almost like a like a um, a house of cards, right? You know, like when you build a house, like out of like out of a deck playing cards, you know, um, you, you have that really nice balance. Like every card is delicately balanced and it's holding up one and it's also like resting on another one below it. And the idea with food webs and interdependency is that when you take one card out of it, it throws everything off in balance. Um, so, um, and, and another way to think about it from an evolutionary perspective is like in this particular desert, this food web took you know, millions of years to like get that right balance, right? In the early years of this of this desert biome, there were probably a lot of species that went extinct. They were, or some populations got really big and then got really small. And they were, it was like kind of a, um, a very turbulent time to figure out the balance of how all these species can kind of coexist with each other. And then once they, the, the population sizes kind of stabilize and get to that, that like nice balance, that healthy balance, then you have like a really uh, stable uh, ecosystem. Um, and so, uh, the more biodiverse a ecosystem is, the more stability it's going to have, right? Because uh, if, you know, this one actually is really small. It only includes like a dozen species. But if you go to the rainforest where, you know, there might be like 3,000 species in one given area, well, if one species dies out, there are enough alternative ways to like for other animals to get their, their food. Um, and that whole ecosystem ends up being more stable. So thank you for that question. Um, Trophic. Kenny, you type trophic cascade, but I don't know. That's not really a question, so I'm trying to understand what. Oh, you're answering Curtis's question. Got it. Okay. What inspired me to do this assignment? The due date. The green tree theory. I'm not really familiar with the green tree theory. What is that about? Let's look that up. Green tree theory. Oops, I typed it wrong. Uh, there's a music band about that, Tree of Life. Uh, it's not really, nothing's really coming up right now. Let me put it in quotes, let's see. I've never heard about that. I'm not really getting any pull-ups. That's all good, it's all good. All right, any other questions about um, any of the lessons? They're pretty easy ideas, um, but let me kind of, uh, it was something like, why are leaves still on trees? Huh. As opposed to not having leaves? Hmm. I'm not really sure. Yeah, elaborate. I'll, I'll, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Um, anyways, th here's the thing, guys. This unit is actually really straightforward. Okay, the concepts in this unit, um, are pretty are pretty easy to understand, um, but the reason why it's uh, it's important to go over it and you really want to wrap your head around it is because um, what I'm trying to do for you in the next two weeks is help you understand how um, the different how the dynamics of Earth works. Okay, um, I want you to understand that like before humans arrived, you know, a couple you know, ten million years ago. Before that, there's been like millions of years of evolution, of interaction, of interdependency 
where like the earth has kind of reached a, a really nice balance um, that allows life to thrive and sustain and evolve and, and all of that. Um, and why do we want to understand that? Because after we come back from spring break, Miss Rays is going to take you guys through uh, the human impact unit where uh, we start to look at how human activity, human population growth, uh, human consumption has actually changed the way that the natural system is supposed to work. Okay, so what? Uh, uh, even though like a lot of these ideas are really easy, um, you wanna you wanna understand like at a, as a baseline, this is what's happening so that you can understand uh, how things might have changed as as human civilizations kind of spread out around the planet. Uh, Kenny said something about it being eaten by other animals. What is preventing animals from eating all the leaves from the trees? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Um, yeah, no, if you got to go, man, that's all good. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I think... Um, well, that's a good question. What's preventing animals from eating all the leaves from the trees? I think it's... Uh, I mean, there's a, a certain... like. If you, from the plant's perspective, right, there's not that much a plant can do. I mean, if you're a bush growing on the ground um, and and you're like all your leaves are accessible by deer, if the if the deer want to and if the deer population is big enough, it will come in and eat all those plants. But um, I guess I, I kind of see what you're where you're coming from. It's like in terms of the balance, uh, it, there's like a, there's a feedback cycle, right? It's kind of like negative feedback that we've talked about. Um, if the leaves are at this amount and the deer eat all those leaves, then all the food goes away and the deer populations are naturally going to fall, like come down. And so many times, um, and you actually will see this in uh, an activity in assignment four, where when you're looking at predator and prey, the population of predator and prey seem to kind of follow each other, where the prey go up, the, po the, pr the predator goes up, then the prey goes down, the predator goes down. And there's this feedback cycle that you know, from a day-to-day -day or a month-to-month -month basis, it looks like the populations are changing all the time. But when you zoom out to the big picture, like over hundreds or thousands of years, what's actually happening is both the predator and the, pop the prey populations are actually staying pretty stable because they're kind of keeping each other in check. Uh, and you could say, kind of say the same thing for uh, what's happening with trees and animals, right? Is that like if the, if the plants all get eaten the, and, the, and the plant population goes down, then the animal population is going to go down too. Um, and then that would give the plants a time to rebound and grow back up. So uh, I, I now I kind of understand where you're coming from. Um, yeah, and then predators are obviously, the same thing would happen between the deer and let's say like the wolves. Um, their populations would keep each other in check. Uh, Anjali is asking for finals. Is it going to include things from the first semester? Um, probably not. I think... Um, you know, a lot of the skills and big picture themes that we've talked about, like those could show up, but I'm not going to like, may not necessarily like, have you go back and like memorize stuff from first semester. I obviously, I hope that you remember some of those things. Um, but uh, I would say for now, don't, don't worry about it. You guys should have your first semester notebook around though. So, you know, if there are like little random facts or random things that you need to look up, you know, you have that hopefully uh, as a resource, but I, I don't, Honestly, I don't know exactly what's going to go on with finals yet. It kind of depends on what happens with coronavirus and uh, and what happens, you know, with us going back to school and and all that. We're still figuring a lot of a lot of things out, a lot of unanswered questions. Okay, so sorry if that's not the answer you wanted. Oh, green world hypothesis. Yeah. Okay, that makes. Yeah, I think I've heard of that. Okay, guys, there's 23 of you out there and uh, only like five of you talking, which I guess is kind of realistic <laughs> in the whole class. Uh, but if you uh, haven't really jumped in here or asked a question yet, you're wondering anything, do not be scared, just jump in. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, Curtis, there isn't that many levels because there isn't enough biomass at high levels. Yeah, so um, <laughs> that's fine, Justin. You can, you can observe if you'd like. Um, yeah, let me look up, um, let me get a picture of an energy pyramid here just so you guys can see what we mean by that. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna grab the first picture that I see. Let's do it in terms of, num let's do a pyramid of numbers. Okay, so let me switch over. So in our pyramid, 
um, the, you know, what all pyramids have in common, right, is that the base is the biggest and as you work your way up, it gets smaller and smaller. And um, depending on whether you're looking at energy or biomass or the actual population size, which is what this one shows, it does generally follow that rule. And let's just see if you guys remember, what is the percentage of energy that moves on from one level to the next? Not the energy loss, but the energy that moves on. Go ahead and type in that number right now. Who can be the first, first 10 people to type it in? <laughs> oh, careful, Curtis. I'm asking about the amount of energy that moves on, not the energy that is lost. Okay, so 90% is the energy that is lost. Correct answer is 10%. Yeah, it is. you were right the first time. So if you, if you kind of, yeah, it looks like some people are getting a little confused. Okay, what I'm asking is how much energy actually moves on? And the answer is 10%. Okay, 90% uh, is loss. Um, Clea, it is it is the energy loss that restricts the length of the chain. Yeah. So let's kind of let's let's go through that really quick, right? So um, the idea with this is when we talk about energy being passed on to the next level, that that's energy that has to be stored in your body, right? Um, what I mean by that is like if you think of a mouse getting eaten by a cat, right? The only part, the only energy in the mouse's body that the cat is going to be able to get is the energy that's stored in the muscles and the sugars and the fats of the mouse, right? And so when you think about what the mouse eats, let's say the mouse is eating uh, some plants, right, or insects or whatever, the mouse is going to eat, let's say, a hundred joules of energy, but not all that energy is actually going to be turned into new uh, mouse muscle or mouse fat or mouse sugar, right? Uh, a lot of that energy is actually lost through feces. And a lot of energy the mouse is going to use to stay alive uh, and it's going to break down those sugars, break down those fats, do cell respiration, and it's going to lose that energy in the form of heat. So the 10% means that only about 10% of the food that the energy that the, the or 10% of the energy that the mouse is eating is actually going to translate into new into new mass or biomass for the mouse. And so when the cat eats the mouse, the cat's not going to get energy from the feces because that's been pooped out. And the cat certainly can't get the energy that was used already in cell respiration and lost as heat. Um, the cat's only going to get the energy that's been stored as biomass. Uh, and that's where we get the 10% rule from. Um, and uh, Anjali is asking, is that why predators try to eat the stronger prey? Uh, not necessarily. Many times predators will find the prey that's easiest to, to catch. Uh, it's not so much about, like, about who's stronger or who's weaker. Um, and actually, like, I think when predators are hunting, they're not really actually thinking about, um, you know, how much energy they're going to get out of it. They're, they're usually, you know, if you're a wolf, you're kind of looking at your, you're going to look for like the easiest thing to get, right? Because if, if the wolf has to run like 10 miles to catch this deer, he, he's going to use a lot, a lot of energy compared to the energy he's going to be bringing in. So they, they do often go for the smallest or the weakest or, you know, the sickest ones and, and eat them. Um, but anyways, that's kind of where the 10% rule comes from, okay? It's all about like how much is stored in the body and that's how much it moves on. And that 10% number can be transferred or translated between like energy and biomass and population size. Um, so Curtis, to answer your question, um, why aren't there that many levels? It's because uh, if you look at the picture I have here, by the time we get towards the higher part of the, the population here, right? If you think about like an osprey, if it, if it, what it needs to, to eat in order to survive. Well, if every offspray, um, to, to keep one offspray alive, you have to have 10 northern pikes, which is a, a, a big predatory fish. And to support that 10, those 10 pikes, you have to have 100 perch, you have to have 1,000 bleaks, and you have to have 10,000 freshwater shrimp, right? In other words, in this particular ocean or lake or whatever, you have to have 10,000 shrimp for one osprey to survive. Uh, and that's why we have limited numbers of offspray, right? Because if the offspray were at 10, thousand imagine how many shrimp you would have to have in the water and how many plants you'd have to have in the water to support all that so that's why the top predators are usually limited in their in their population size and that's also why you have limited numbers of levels um, in a food chain because if you were to like add another predator on top of the offspray that would mean that you would have to increase the the producers and all the lower level consumers to support that high level predator so that's why it's it's kind of limited um, yeah, so essentially, Curtis, you're, you're correct. The producers and lower consumers can't support more higher consumers. The, the thing that 
uh, is the limiting factor, right? Is the way you can think about this. The thing that limits the number of levels you can have or the, the number of predators you have at the top is gonna be how many are at the bottom. And that's why, like, just think about this, compare a rainforest to a desert, right? Um, just based on this one fact alone, you know, do you expect more levels in a rainforest or more levels in a desert, right? When you look at the predators in a rainforest versus the top predators in a desert, do you expect a lot more predators in a rainforest or a lot more pre predators in the desert? The answer for both of those is it's gonna be in the rainforest. The rainforest has a lot more producers because of where they're located on the equator. There's more sunlight, there's more water. So you're gonna have a lot more plant life, which then means that you're gonna have more biodiversity, you're gonna have more predators and larger population sizes. Whereas you go to the desert, I can't really think of many predators in the desert. I mean, maybe a mountain lion or two, you know, in a, in a you know, 50 square mile area, you're only gonna have like a couple mountain lions, right? Um, so uh, again, there's that interdependency piece there, right? It's, it's uh, oh yeah, owls, yeah, owls or, or eagles or something, right? But again, you're not, you, you don't go to a desert and see like millions of owls flying around, right? If you're lucky, you, you sit out there all day and maybe you see two fly by. Uh, whereas you look at the ground, you'll see tons of lizards and insects and ants and things like that. Um, so that's the interdependency piece where they're they're really like, one is really gonna rely on the other. Yeah, there's a tortoise. I, don't, I wouldn't put tortoises on the, the top tier of predators in the desert, but I, I think you get the idea. Um, I'm just looking at the time, guys. It's 1.23 and I've got another, I've got uh, six period coming in at 1.30. So I do wanna to wrap this up. Uh, yeah, tortoises are found in the desert generally. Um, they're, they're basically a turtle that's been adapted to very low, low water conditions. Um, if you have any last minute questions, um, either about this or uh, anything in general, now's a good time to ask, guys. I, I gotta go, I probably gotta cut it off in like the next five minutes because I gotta I gotta reset this for the next period. So any questions? Not really too much out there, huh? It's pretty quiet. <laughs> um, okay, that's all good. Uh, if you think of anything, just, you know, you can actually, I think you can comment on the live stream or you could just send me an email. Um, I kind of like, I, I kind of miss you guys. I want to see you guys a little bit more. Um, I may, assuming the baby doesn't come, maybe next week on, uh, maybe on Tuesday, we can, let's, let's try a Zoom. I mean, I like, I love hearing from you guys, but I, I do miss seeing you and hearing your voices and having you guys like see each other. So um, I will try to do a Zoom. Uh, I think I can only go up to 40 minutes or, or yet yeah, for that, but let's try that for next Tuesday um, so that we can all, um, you know, just kind of hang out and see each other. We don't necessarily have to go over bio stuff, but uh, we can do that certainly if we need to. Uh, last questions, will there be tests? during this month and a half. Um, you know, I think what it's gonna look like is probably just those Canvas quizzes. That's probably gonna be the, the closest thing that we have to test. Um, so yeah, it's not my favorite, but it, it's kind of what we can do. Um, I don't know what other teachers are doing for their assessments or tests or whatnot, but um, yeah, that's kind of, that's all we can kind of offer to you, okay? Um, if there are no other questions, I'm going to, going to close up here, um, and move on to the next period. So, uh, it was really good hearing from you guys. And, uh, like I said, I really miss you guys and, 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 you know, even, even the times where it's a little crazy, I do miss that craziness. It's been pretty quiet here at home. Um, just me and my wife hanging out and waiting for a baby. <laughs> okay. I'm going to head out. Um, my last suggestion to you guys is this. Again, a lot of you guys uh, are saying you feel really lonely and you're, you're lacking that schedule. Um, try to take my advice from earlier. You know, make, you know, text your friends and make some appointments to FaceTime. Uh, you can have lunch dates. You can have gaming dates. You can have watch a movie dates. Like you could actually get on Zoom uh, or, face, or FaceTime and like, you know, pick a movie on Netflix and watch it together and talk about it. Uh, I, I've been playing poker, like not with fake money, obviously, but I have like a little poker app that you can play with live people. And, uh, me and my friends, we, we were, we kind of like get online and just join a table and we've been playing together. So, uh, and we're on zoom at the same time so we can see and talk. So if you, if you're feeling kind of lonely, reach out to people. Okay. Um, you don't have to go through this all by yourself. 
Uh, and keep in mind, this is this is only week two of uh, of many many weeks. So, you know, the sooner you make a plan for yourself, the uh, the, the the easier time you're going to have like getting through all this. How much money have I won? Well, it's all fake money, so it means nothing. But uh, I think I'm at like one million dollars or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of crazy. No, nine not, not nine billion. Yeah. All right, guys, I got to run. Uh, it was good talking to you. Have a good one. All right. See ya.